The purpose of this research is to assess the impacts really of the Trans-Canada Highway on, on the wolverine population here in the Canadian Rocky Mountains. Uh, highways have huge impacts on movements of wide-ranging carnivores and traffic like this can, can have a big impact on maintaining viable populations of wildlife, particularly wolverine which are low density and rare occurring species. The study is set up so that we're basically covering 6,000 square kilometers. So we've taken the Trans-Canada Highway from Castle Junction to the west boundary of Yoho. And we've overlaid a 12 by 12 kilometer grid and in each of those grid cells we have a hair trap. That's where we sample wolverines in the area if they are there. The reason we're covering such a large area is because wolverines occur at very low densities and they range over huge areas. They can cover 40 to 50 kilometers in one night. Uh, there's not very many. Uh, as I said, they're very low density. So that's the reason that we have the the survey area is so large and that we're having to cover so much ground because it's a very difficult species to study and has been for 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 decades and it's really the least understood mammal in, in North America today. But with these non-invasive techniques that we're using like this we can cover huge areas. We don't have to trap the animals, we don't have to see the animals, but we can collect uh, really important information on, on their genetics, uh, where they occur, what sort of habitat types are important, and in this study where they're, where they're going to be crossing the highway. So a lot of skiing, a lot of packing of frozen beavers. Overall it will add up to be about 1,500, almost 2,000 kilometers that we're going to ski this during the four months of this, this survey. Well, we started in Lake Louise and Crossed a couple of very windy open lakes <laughs> through some forested areas. Uh, the snow travel wasn't as bad as we expected yesterday, but it was a long way. So what's in this large backpack on my back is about a 30 pound skin beaver. That's what we'll be hauling about 200 meters, or 200 meters, 2 meters up a tree and nailing it to the tree for a wolverine. And did you skin the beaver? I did. <laughs> New skills. <laughs> that tree might be over six. Yeah. Just got to get rid of all the branches or anything that could set up the camera. Watch out. Uh, so you have a saw too? No, do we? No, I don't no. think we do. So far, I've done two beavers up a tree, and both times I get to put the scent also up the tree, which is this very smelly, rotted, putrid meat smell. And if you get even one micron on your gloves or your clothing, you will be attacked in the street by herds of dogs. <laughs> I don't know what your climbing skills are going to come in handy for. <laughs> Do you need this? Nope. Now, that beaver's got a curve. Oh, they all do. Buggers. Wave your hands, Marg. <laughs> Look like a beaver. <laughs> Okay. And if a wolverine goes after a bait, hopefully we'll catch some of this fur on the on the little barbs, and then we collect that, and they can get a lot of information from the fur. You just attach um, a small cloth or rag to string, uh, toss it up over the branch, and then once you pull it back down to the ground, you can put what we have as a liquid scent lure. Um, it's really potent. So hopefully if there's an animal even down the valley that they'll catch the scent and come. Where's the beaver? That looks pretty good. Oh yeah. Put it on again for last hot to drink.
our research here in, in this project, this five-year project with Parks Canada, is to not only help Parks Canada design, um, let's say, Wolverine-friendly highways, but uh, the information that we can uh, obtain from this project is going to be extremely valuable to uh, transportation planners and transportation departments in, in the United States, in Montana, in Idaho, Wyoming, Colorado, um, where there's just going to be more highway expansion in, their, in Wolverine habitat.